Welcome to our NPT lectures on the power quality improvement technique. Today we are going to discuss shunt active power filter. Shunt active power filter uh, we shall continue to cover within uh, two three lectures. So, our presentation layout will be the general introduction, thereafter different reference generation technique in time domain and frequency domain and thereafter we can have a uh, we, we, we have to discuss about the current tracking once you generate the reference we require to track the reference and for this reason we require to have a current tracking algorithm and that will be covered in detail and they will introduce some kind of nonlinear control on it for an example and to mitigate the problem and difference case studies. Thereafter active power filter topologies that is also something very interesting and challenging. Generally this active power filter gives a copes to work for the many people in the many background. Those who are from the power system background generally they are familiar with different kind of optimization technique and due to the advancement of the different kind of heuristic opti optimal technique. So, they generally prefer to the uh, generation of uh, this current reference generation technique. What we have discussed we will be discussing also in the UPQC same kind of reference technique can be associated, but there is a difference between the UPQC and the shunt active power filter. And thereafter, uh, this is the current tracking, and thereafter, the current tracking is mostly the control, uh, uh, the persons from the control background approaching the power quality problem and find a solution on the shunt active power filter. They mostly contribute on the current tracking, and different kind of modern control technique can be applied here to track the current reference once the reference has been generated quite accurately. And thereafter, the power electronics engineers comes into the pictures, and who are supposed to uh, 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 so are supposed to investigate and maybe reproduce the new topologies for the shunt active power filter for better redundancy of operation, reliability and also the cost overall cost of the system. And though this work was reported by Akagi in 1984, many of you have not born then maybe. Uh, so, still whether it left with any future scope, we will see that because there we can integrate uh, and how this shunt active power filter can be multi, it can do the multi activity with the integration of the different renewable energy sources. That is a present, I should not say future scope of work, rather present extension of the work and with the conclusion. So, this will be our layout and we require to, we will be covering in maybe 2, 3 classes more than that maybe also. Okay. So, as we know that we require for the detailed understanding of the passive filter, you know that there is a limitations of the passive filter. We are not going to reiterate this discussion again here for that lack of time. So, you know the demerits of the passive filters and for the reason we require to investigate on the active filters. And that can be come into the heading of active power line conditioner and thus you can have a shunt active power filter that we are going to cover and generally it gen inject the voltage in shunt, we will see the topology in next slide. And thereafter series active power filter, it will inject the voltage in series and thus compensate or voltage sack, soil and other problem related to the voltage issues and all can be provided the solution by unified power quality conditioner that is called UPQC or UPFC. So, this is the topology of the one line diagram of the shunt active power filter. You have a source V s 
and thereafter mostly you have a small inductance this is the source inductance and that can be the leakage inductance of the transformer and once you pass through a nonlinear load so current profile will be this and ultimately you have to inject the current in such a way is something like this so that load C is as if a resistive load is connected to it. So, another can be your shunt uh, series active power filter where you inject the current and thereafter what happened you get uh, the voltage sack or soil it will be you can inject in voltage in phase this aspect we have covered in the series portion of the UPQC in detail and thus our lecture will be totally concentrated mainly on the shunt, but here but as a topology concerned. So, you can clear also the harmonics and also sacs and soils by the series injection. One of the advantage is that it does not see the, the difference of the voltage between the actual voltage and the reference voltage. Thus, power retaining of this devices is quite less and if you integrate both this entity then it is became a uh, power quality conditioner or UPQC unified power quality conditioner. So, this has been we have discussed in detail in a separate lectures in last 3 or 4 lectures has been dedicated to it. So, I am not discussing here. Let us come to the another version of it that require little more discussions that is called hybrid topology. So, we can have a shunt active power filter and the switches and we can have a hybrid power topologies. So, ultimately shunt active power filter may, uh, may compensate the higher order harmonic because you can tune to fifth and seventh that can sink from here and higher order harmonic if you try to concentrate then the rating of these devices will be less. In that way some way position of placing the passive filter and active filter and which one will concentrate on which harmonic in that way you can reduce the total uh, harmonic content of the system and you can give you a optimized solution of this total system. So, then that is a one of the working area and this kind of system with the passive and active power filter set to be the hybrid shunt active filter. So, this is the total circuit diagram of the shunt active power filter here you have a source inductance and resistance and you got a nonlinear load and you may cut down it. So, then it will have a single phasing and you may have a load changing operation and you have a shunt active power filter and generally this capacitor voltage required to be maintained by a uh, maintained actively by a PI controller. Now, there is a two kind of algorithm one is the all the reference generation technique we will discuss later that is referred to the indirect method and we can also have a direct method that we will not discuss because this has some limitation to it. So, ultimately this is a control block diagram of active power filter. So, you have V s here and you have L s here R s has been neglected. So, you will sense you will sense this load current at the point of before the point of common coupling after this point of common coupling this point is called PCC. So, this you will go to the reference generation calculation and then you will sense this DC bus voltage of the shunt active power filter inverter and that will be there and you require to maintain the DC bus voltage. Generally, your DC bus voltage required to be maintained around 20 percent higher than the peak value because you know if it is only compensating harmonic, the harmonic current is quite less and for this reason very small amount of current will flow and due to that you, you can say that 
this devices will remain at the open circuit voltage, but you have to actively take it around 20 to 25 percent higher than this, uh, this voltage typically. So, we will see the different topological variation there we can have a different advantage of it and thus you can reduce the switching losses. And it is mostly a PI controller and generally it gives you the value of d i s d and this nonlinear load will generate this what kind of uh, i c value is required to be generated. This has to be add up ultimately i c plus i s d has to be fed to the controller because this comes from the i s d and this is the actual IST that has been fed and ultimately you may have a hysteresis controller or the or the uh, or the PI controller then from this reference signal you get the reference modulated technique and this PWM will be fired the thyristors or mostly these are real lower rating and thus you will be having the IGBTs. Then generally if it is a statcom you can use thyristors then you get a pulse in only one inverter generally it will be IGBT or for the higher power rating it will be GTO because since it is a PWM you have a frequent switching on and switching off are required. So, you will inject the current into the system. Now, let us come to the first part of our discussions that is the reference generation technique. So, reference generation technique can be broadly classified into the time domain. One is a PQ theory that is proposed by the father of this shunductive power filter Professor Akagi and SRM method, SRM method essentially it was derived from the vector control of the uh, induction machine drive. So, it is quite old method, but it has been taken from there. So, both this theory is in time domain and both has its own advantage and limitations. And then we can have another domain analysis that is FFT by FFT of the load current you can find it out what are the component of the frequencies presents and you take it out there to RDFT recursive first Fourier transform from that way also you can find it out the there is a shifting FFT there to wave light there to uh, shifting window FFT there is a many other methods that we can use here for the purpose of the for the purpose of this frequency of analysis. Same way there is another method or other method these are mainly evaluation in computing ANNGA and other method and adaptive filtering method the Kalman filter method adapting Kalman filter method. For sake of time you know we shall discuss PQ theory and since the evolutionary te computing technique is gaining a huge attention nowadays, we will discuss one theory on the uh, on the uh, ANN based reference generation technique here. Now, how does it been done? This is my mind it is an indirect entity. There is a another method it is called direct entity ultimately you leave everything on the capacitor then we have find that the power quality problem does not solve much. I just explain it there I will explain the another way of doing it. So, load current we can it is can be expanded with its because you are taken a sample and this sample may have a quantization error and due to that you may have some DC component or you may be triggering the thyristors if thyristors for the nonlinear load and if their angle is little different of alpha required to compensate. So, for a small interval of time. 
So, this DC component may come ultimately it will be adjusted. And similarly, I p is a in phase component of the current with the voltage and I q is the quadrature axis current all the harmonics current is represented by this and ultimately we shall see that V s equal to V m cos omega t. So, we expect that I p equal to the in phase component of the current I p cos omega t. So, the compensating current I c will be I l minus I p. So, you require to calculate this entity very accurately by the reference generation technique and thus what happened you know thus you got a C the compensating current will be I l minus I p that is essentially I l minus I p cos omega t. So, this method is called indirect method and with that you add up if you you go back to this circuit. So, thus you get I c star here and you add up I s t and you have segregated the job reference generation technique is one this P i controller maintain the capacitor voltage and another this entity will calculate the reference and it is observed that it gives the better it gives the better results. So, uh, this kind of shunt active power filter it compensates the current harmonic by the injecting equal and opposite amount of the harmonic compensating current it operates as a current source injecting harmonic you can think of. Uh, the harmonic generates straight by the load 180 degree or out of phase of this injecting current thus your load current is this ultimately you inject this. So, source will see that this entity is sinusoidal as if a resistive load is connected with the voltage source. Now, there is uh, another method that is called direct current technique. So, there what happen everything essentially this is your APF and here you have the PCC you have you have a nonlinear load and this is your source and you want to do everything by means of a one single capacitor. What essentially you will do you will sense sin omega t from this entity and thereafter you know you have V c star and, and you have a V d c from there you will compare it and you know that you require to maintain that little bit higher thereafter you will have this uh, P i controller, P i controller will make this voltage little bit higher if it is a single phase fluid understand that it is not 2 V m by pi will be the average voltage because there is anti parallel diet. So, with the I g b t, so it will be maintaining some voltage even if, 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 if just this switch has been closed. But you require to take around let us say uh, 50 volt higher if it is a single phase system and if it is a 440 volt you require to maintain the rectifier voltage around uh, around 100 volt higher. So, how you will do that? So, essentially we will come with the control strategy there. So, from there you get I s t and I s t will be multiplied with the sin omega t. So, that will be your I s t sin omega t this will be the reference current and that will be fed to the APF and that is all you do not you just maintain the DC bus voltage in a diesel level and and thus to and you try to inject the all the current. So, you try to sense only this current because you will make this current sinusoidal with respect to heat then we will say that it is a direct method. But problem on the direct method is 
everything the maintaining the receiver's voltage and compensation of this harmonic current lies on the responsibility of the PI controller. That itself is a tuning of this PI controller is quite challenging and for this reason we generally split this work on the indirect method where someone just switch it over. So, ultimately someone will will maintain the receiver's voltage and another block will actually cal calculate the reference current and thus combination will work and it gives a better power quality solution. Now, let us come to the one of the reference important reference generation technique that is called instantaneous reactive power theory. You know there is a we can transform ABC to FEM to the alpha beta FEM and there is an advantage and we consider that it is a 3 phase 3 OS system and for this reason 0 sequence entity comes. Otherwise essentially there is an advantage of converting into the ABC to the alpha beta FEM it is essentially that instead of the having the 2 phase quant 3 entities we will have the two entities. So, that is the transformation all about. So, it is a static transformation and for this reason you have a VA, VB, VC and thereafter you got a I0, I alpha and I beta. This is a current and voltage transformation from the ABC to alpha beta 0 FEM. So, instantaneous real power and the reactive power in the three phase can be represented as so you multiply it. So, it is V A I A plus V B I B plus V C I C and thus is corresponds to V alpha I alpha V beta I beta and V 0 I 0 and thus you got a P alpha P beta P 0 and from there you can write or split it this is p alpha beta real and also the this 0 sequence power and this is a th generally third harmonic power and thus it is also the cofaser. Similarly, you have a cross product of it. So, that is uh, v alpha into i beta plus v beta into I alpha and you got the V alpha minus I beta minus I beta minus I alpha. So, taking into the negative signs comes into the picture because it is an imaginary quantity and thus the negative sign will come. So, you can uh, you can go back from this matrix and you can rewrite that 1 by 1 third we see in terms of the line voltage we will be writing into I A plus please understand this quantity is 90 degree. Why if you take the I A and with the same phase if you take V A, so it is V B V C. So, ultimately if you extend it, it is minus V C. So, you can have this angle that is V B C is 90 degree. So, for this reason this is 90 degree. Similarly, I B into C A also the angle between them is 90 degree and V A into I C and this multiplication since they are in a quadratures gives you the reactive power. So, we can rewrite like this P alpha uh, power at 0 sequence power as of alpha beta frame and the reactive power at the alpha beta frame can be represented as P 0 P alpha beta Q alpha beta it is V 0 V alpha minus V and similarly we just represent like this this is a matrix representation of it. 
and thus if you take the inverse matrix of it. So, you can get this current reference I 0, I alpha and I beta essentially it is a matrix inverse of it and you get this value that is 1 by 0 sequence component plus V square alpha plus V beta square and these are the diagonal element of it and these are the power. Power you can measure, so that is one of the advantage of it and thus you can get the current in the alpha beta frame. So, the uh, this I 0, I alpha, I beta can be computed as follows. So, it is P 0 V square uh, alpha plus V square beta by V 0 V square alpha plus V beta square. Essentially, everything will cancel and it is the P 0 by V 0 that is essentially I 0. And here I alpha, you can split it like this V alpha by V alpha square plus V beta square P alpha beta plus minus V beta same numer denominator into Q B. So, you get I alpha P please refer to my previous slide I alpha Q. Similarly, for I beta it is V beta uh, square plus uh, V beta square plus this denominator will be same this will be again it is just this will be V alpha this will be V beta other term will be same. Similarly, it is V alpha and it is Q alpha beta denominator will be same ultimately you get I B P plus I B Q. So, that will be the refer I beta. So, where so we can write like that little bit of synchronized way 0 sequence instantaneous current is I 0. So, I alpha p is the in phase component of the active current that is p cos omega t sometime we refer to I p cos omega t this will be this, this expression V alpha by V square alpha plus beta square into the actual power consumed. So, beta will be in phase component of the current will be V beta by this is the same denominator. Again these are the cross component this is a react, real power in alpha that is in phase component of the reactive power that is V beta minus V square plus V alpha square plus V beta square. Similarly, it will be with the Q. Using the above definitions of various components of the current the three phase instantaneous power can be expressed this, this and this of course and thus it is as it is remain same V alpha uh, V i alpha can be changed and we can write like this. And similarly, I beta can be changed we write like this. So, you have a very big expressions as we have seen. So, it is V 0 I 0 plus V alpha of this expression plus this expression ultimately you sum up what you essentially get it is V 0 I 0 plus P alpha plus P beta. So, this is the real power and you know that exactly P alpha plus P beta equal to instantaneous electric power and we want that active power filter should not inject any real power thus the sum required to be 0 instantaneously. So, for this is called this instantaneous reactive power theorem. So, based on that we refer the compensator of the filter and this can be written as follows uh, this is the alpha beta this is the component of this active power filter this will be the 0 sequence component this will be the alpha and beta component of the shunt active power filter that will make that instantaneous power to be instantaneous real power to be 0 and we can rewrite like that and since the compensation does not 
supply an instantaneous real power, but strictly speaking it is not because it required to take a little bit of capacitor uh, real power to maintain the capacitor voltage. So, this will be the expression. So, instantaneous zero sequence power exchange between the load and the compensator and compensator reactive power must be equal to the reactive power and thus we have this relation. So, it is P f 0 equal to P l 0 equal to V 0 I l 0 and P f alpha beta equal to minus L 0 equal to minus V 0 I 0 and Q f alpha beta equal to again Q l that is the reactive power that required to be compensated by the shunt active power filter and essentially it is V alpha I beta plus uh, V alpha I beta minus V beta I l alpha. So, this is the pictorial diagram of the shunt active power filter in the domain of the power quality. So, we know that this is 0 as per the shunt active power filter. So, this is the figure we have considered and here this is the instead of the we represent in into the alpha beta frame instead of we represent in the alpha, alpha beta frame instead of the source current ABC. So, P L will flow and delta P will come that will actually that will make the DC bus voltage higher than the required voltage to operate properly and this is the P L and P L load this will go back this will be a power flow diagram with the real power flow diagram and ultimately Q L uh, this is the ash line you can see that Q L will circulate within this line and thus source does not require to supply any Q L from the supply. Thank you for your attention we shall continue with the some portion of the instantaneous reactive power theory thereafter we will be looking after other control theory also. Thank you.